Hello, in episode 14 of the WOAS podcast, we take a little bit of a departure from our normal format and just start speaking freely about whatever topic we decide is necessary. Jeremy introduces the topic of uh, our Spotify wrap for 2023, which turns into a delightful discussion about the one and only Tom Petty of Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers. Hope you enjoy what you see. Leave comments below, like and subscribe, help us out, and we'll do some more from the hip stuff as we go forward. Enjoy. Gotcha. All right. Yeah. Well, mine, my top artists are very revealing. You can get a sense of where I am okay. as a listener of music. Number one, Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers. Oh, int- wow. You know, I'm a huge Tom Petty fan. I was in the 0.1% listeners of Tom okay. Petty. Which is, and again, that's probably like some huge, huge listener base, right? Yeah. He still has a lot of listeners. All right. Number yeah. two, you're going to okay. love this. Okay. Is Tom Petty without the heartbreakers. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Jesus. Wait a second. Let's, let's, let's pause on this for a second because I did know in the sense that when we were doing our uh, Daisy Jones in the Six episode, you were talking yeah. about the biography written about him and, you know, the anecdote about uh, Stevie Nicks and Make It Swampy yeah. and all that stuff. But no, I mean, like, we've never talked about Tom Petty outside of that. We, we can now throw that up there as a uh, candidate for an episode as well. Yeah, I can but, talk Tom Petty all day. Yeah, okay, good, good, good. I'm obviously a giant fan. Yeah. And Spotify doesn't capture the times I've put on my Tom Petty vinyl records and listen to those. Yeah, okay, so those see, there you go. It's another, included. you know, it's not. It's a bit of a misnomer, right? Yeah. <laughs> Have you been a Tom Petty fan since... As early as you were into like rock music or whatever, um, or so is that... I've always liked Tom Petty songs. Yeah, and you know he's got a lot of classic. You know, you play around a campfire. Yeah, kind of kind of songs. Yeah. Mary Jane's Last Dance, mm-hmm. Free Fall, and everybody that plays guitar knows how to play those songs. Mm-hmm. If you're of a certain age, yeah, and I am. Um, but just recently, I would say like I got back into playing guitar in 2019, mm-hmm. and I was just thinking about artists that I respected their songwriting and the vibe they put out. Yeah. And there's so many bands that are like amazing, technically proficient musicians. Like you look at Led Zeppelin and even like the Beatles in some respects that Mm -hmm. are just these huge, massive bands. And I love all those bands. But then I I just always was thinking about Tom Petty's career yeah. And the output he had over such a long period of time mm-hmm. put out really good songs all the way until he died, really, if, yep. you, if you listen yeah. to his catalog. Totally and accurate. so, yeah, and he he never was like a guy that was going to blow you out of the water with like, oh my God, I can't believe Tom Petty just did that. Mm-hmm. But it was just like consistent quality output of music. Yeah. And I started really getting into his music because of that and like looking into him more, reading about him more, and obviously listening to a lot of Tom Petty songs. Yeah. And I don't know, he's just become, for me, like the the guy that I'll just put on if I'm having a bad day or whatever. I'm just putting mm-hmm. on some Tom Petty. Like it feels comfortable now. I, I've i listened to the entire catalog multiple times. Yeah. And I don't know, for me, it's just, it's that little comfort of uh, I won't back down coming on. Just makes you feel good. Sure, and, and and there's so many different sort of um, sonic flavors and eras of Tom Petty that you can like, you know, kind of mm-hmm. settle into and cater to every vibe. Yeah, um, I'm gonna continue yeah. to or just derail us because you hit a nerve. I I feel almost the exact same way, and I'm gonna say to you know other middle aged or approaching middle aged white males that if you are feeling the same way from the gut, it's probably it's probably due to the fact that like here's an artist that in your youth growing up there's been this consistent artist like you're saying Jeremy that has done a consistent sort of job of writing like a certain quality of a pop friendly rock body of work that is impressive unto itself but also like there's a lot of versatility there both in the kinds of songs he's written And then Mm -hmm. the people that he's worked with and the projects he's done. For instance, you listen to the first album, which now this is something I only discovered recently in the last maybe like two years. Not only does it have a unusual amount of hits for a first album on it. um, Yeah. In fact, yeah, just so I don't like 
as I usually do, talk out of my ass. <laughs> Let me pull up the. Uh, so you got breakdown, um, American Girl. I mean, those are two gigantic. Yeah, those are two giant hits that you're gonna hear every single day, probably still on classic rock radio. Yeah, and so, uh, so like Luna was a hit too, right? Luna, like, I don't think so. No, okay. So American Girl, Breakdown. Fooled Again was a pretty popular one, I think, at the okay. time. Oh, yeah, right. Okay, okay. But I listened to that album, and it's like, okay, there's two... All right, so like even one hit would be great, but there's two big hits from that yeah. album, right? Which is no small feat, especially when like no one knows who the fuck you are like from the public's point of view. I'm sure all of his like peers, right. like, you know, he's dating Stevie Nicks. Like, obviously, like, that echelon of musician knew who he was. But, right. you know, a song like... Which is my favorite song on the whole album, a song like Anything That's Rock and Roll... Okay. Yeah, that's a good one. Okay. And it's like it's kind of like a punk song. Uh-huh. But it's also what you see on this album and what you see throughout the rest of his career, but particularly on this album, like again, right out of the gate, before he's evolved and like gone through all these different, you know, experimental phases. Usually a lot mm-hmm. of artists have to go through all this bullshit to like find their voice or find their voice says. This guy, first album, he he's got all these songs where he's sing, singing these different vocal stylings. And Anything that's rock and roll is like probably the most different from all the songs. And it's, you know, it's very mm-hmm. much like a blues, like a, you know, like a blues hammer, like dun, 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 dun. some friends of yeah. mine and me, they know I've been doing that rock. Right. And it's like very, yeah. the pacing of it is like very kind of punk and like new wave, mm-hmm. t- like touching. And, and that's what's interesting because like if yeah. you go to any point in his career, after that, um, you know, album to album, you'd be like, oh, like he, he's like the pop rock guy, or like, oh, he's like the like late 80s, like the, like a little bit synthy, a little bit experimental, but like mostly sort of rock framework yeah. guy, if you think of like, um, you don't come around here anymore, no um, which I think all that stuff's all Jeff Lynne produced. Yeah. And then eventually Rick Rubin gets involved, and, and then it's like a little bit more sort of like polished yet raw and rough and like a little bit more rock and roll. At that point with um, Rick Rubin, he starts to get into a lot of acoustic stuff yes. as well. Like you yeah. still got the rock side, mm-hmm. but you're heavy on acoustic guitars. And more organic and feeling. It's this evolution. Yeah. Right. Right. And and then and then like somewhere before any of this, uh, well, not any of this, like before the Rick Rubin stuff is, uh, or maybe even before Jeff Lynne and, you know, where, whenever it happened is the, the Traveling Wilburys. And I think there's like two albums yeah. and he was on yeah, both of so them. Yeah, so that was like concurrent with some of the Jeff Lynn stuff. Okay. And well, right. Jeff yeah. Lynn, Cause like Jeff Lynn is in the uh, Wilburys. Is in the Wilburys and produced all that stuff. He produced it yeah. too. Yeah. He produced all their, uh, their, both of their albums. Okay. So, right. So it's like, so if you take all these different snapshots of, of Petty, um, you know, let's say you took 20 snapshots from across, you know, uh, 10 different albums, projects, whatever. Yeah. You'd have ten different ideas as to who and what this guy is, and yeah. I think like as is the case with a lot of popular artists, um, especially when you're younger. Um, and this is what I'm saying about like you know like <laughs> like young white males listening to like you know just kind of typical radio rock is like there's a very sort of like specific like pipeline that you know you go down or you're fed of like what you know like what is like your music, let's say, and you either sort of like ate that up or you were like, ah, oh, that's too like basic and blah, blah, blah. And that's how I felt when I was younger. I was like, mm-hmm. like, this is not like it's bad. It's just sort of um, too, it's just like too. I think you just want when you're younger, a bit more testosterone in your music than what Tom Petty was bringing in a lot of the songs. But it, I mean, it's, it's fucking there on the first sex. album, big time, you know? It's there. Uh, it, it's there on the first album, but like he definitely mellows out as the years go by. Yeah, yeah. But then, but it then, like when, like, and again, like, we're we're close enough in age. But like yeah. when Mary Jane's Last Dance came out, yeah. I want to say I was like fourteen or something, uh-huh. and like that had that had testosterone. That was like, uh, yeah. you know, that was like really like, and and that's I think thanks to Rick Rubin that had the same kind of oomph that like Blood Sugar Sex Magic has and Rage Against yeah. the Machine, um, yeah. as far as like the delivery. But yes, a lot of stuff you know, sort of prior to that uh, is is like a little bit sort of like mellow and, and kind of safe. 
Um, mm-hmm. You know, I, I think of like even Free Fallen and uh, the the one with Johnny Depp in the video. Yeah, yeah. Rebel Without a Clue. It's like there probably the overproduction of Jeff Lynn. I don't know if you've heard this, but apparently it would be like he isolated and tracked everything. He would have the drummer just do for like yeah. just the snare. Just the snare. For like, <laughs> yeah. For like a whole take and it's then crazy. like just the kick and then just the hot, like what the fuck, you know? So, so anyway, but yeah. like when you do that and it like, I mean, it does sound perfect. Right. But when you do that, it does kind of make right. things sort of over-engineered. And I think that over-engineered perfect simplicity because the songs weren't very complicated as well just kind of cemented mm-hmm. for like guys of your and my age at the time cemented sort of this it's like oh this is like less worth my time because it's it's not edgy and uh complicated to some degree you'd much rather listen to a zeppelin riff than even though they're a great band like a grand funk railroad riff right right yeah so all that being said then you come full circle when you get to like this age or this age range, and you look back on mm-hmm. Tom Petty's career, and you're like, "Wow, <laughs> like who, like yeah, you know, like what an artist, and and to be a minimum of ten different things at one time, yeah, but by just being himself, I mean, it's incredible. The, yeah, the legacy he blows he's me like- away because you look at where he came from. He comes from Gainesville, Florida, which is not a music town. Right, moves to L.A., gets yeah. a record deal. Right. Brings a bunch of his buddies from Florida and then people he knew adjacently in Florida right. to be in his band. Mm-hmm. And then he like plays with Stevie Nicks, who's in a huge band at the time, is in a band with <laughs> like a the Beatle. biggest like <laughs> like AM yeah. radio bands yeah. like ever, you know? Yeah, huge Sorry. AM radio band is in a band with a Beatle, George Harrison. Right, right. Um yeah, and Roy Orbison and Dylan. And Roy Orbison and Jeff <laughs> Lynne and Bob Dylan. Goes yeah. on tour for a year with Bob Dylan. Writes yeah. songs with Bob Dylan. Yeah. Like the guy's career is definitely storied. And then in the 90s, he worked with Rick Rubin on Johnny Cash's albums. Oh, I and didn't know that. The Heartbreakers were the house band basically for Johnny Cash's couple albums there that revitalized The, the one that he did all the covers the and stuff? So the amount of legends that he crossed paths with. Yeah. I, I really feel like Tom Petty is one of the most underrated artists probably of the last 50 years. Yes. In, like people in, respect him and know him, but like they're not like in awe of him the way that we are so many other un- artists. Underrated musician and songwriter. Yeah. Right? Not necessarily underrated artist. Probably gets yeah. his due in that regard, but like musician and songwriter, like from from a, a like a core respect. Right. Yeah, everyone I know that plays music, you know, you tell them that you really like Tom Petty. They're like, all right. Like, everybody thinks Tom Petty's, you know, pretty good. But they're not, like, into the songs. And I I love diving into the songs and hearing all the intricate guitar parts that Mike Campbell put together Mm -hmm. for the songs and the songwriting itself. And there is so many different iterations, like you're saying, of of Petty through the years. Yeah, and again, like, if, if you're listening to this and you don't, like you're aware of Tom Petty, but you know just like two or three songs, and you have mm-hmm. the feeling that we said of like, eh, he's okay. Please go, you know, now or after you listen to this, go on Spotify or whatever you use and go to his first album, self titled Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers. And it's a quick listen because they're not long songs and there's two hits. It's like, yeah. it's, a, it's an easy listen. But tell me you're not after listening to kind of like, Wow, like that's some versatile stuff from one person who hadn't yet gone through a whole yeah. lifetime of, of musical experimentation yet, you know? I mean, this is a guy who self-admittedly got into, yeah. as most of us did, like as teenagers, got into a band to like impress a girl. And the rest right. is history. Like <laughs> that's a feat unto itself, you know? It is. Yeah, so I like... I, I I completely agree, and I think that it's good to have like a blueprint of a control. Like if we're talking like from a scientific point of view, of like it's not like every man's one size fits all type of artist. But if you're talking about a good control that lasts from late seventies through whenever he passed away, maybe about you know what five, four or five years ago, twenty sixteen. Um, yeah, he, he's he's a great reference point in in like rock slash pop music 
you know, if, if you want to sort of like yeah. analyze what makes someone successful, but also like has integrity and, and deserves to have gotten the success that they have, you know? So, yeah. And I would say like, maybe he has one bad album mm-hmm. over that entire run, but there's something good on it. Every single album, there's either a hit yeah. or some hidden gem. Even, um, I have this playlist that I made plug in my, my own playlist here, but if you're really into Tom Petty, I made a playlist on Spotify that's public called Ultimate Tom Petty, playlist by Jeremy. We'll link it in Check the description. It, it has every Tom Petty record, um, every Mud Crutch record, uh, um, and then a couple of little uh, side project things that he did. Wait, with what's Mud, cr- Mud what? Mud Crutch. So Mud Crutch is Tom Petty's original band that he started in Florida. What? <laughs> and... Yeah, and that band had Ben Montench, who plays keyboards, mm-hmm. and Mike Campbell on guitar, and Tom mm-hmm. Petty played bass in the band, and they had a different oh, drummer. Oh, shit. I had no idea. Yeah, and huh. he moved to L.A. to try to... He was trying to sell Mud Crutch, and the record labels told him, uh, we don't want the rest of the guys, we just want you. Hmm. Okay. And half the band moved back to Florida, mm-hmm. and Mike Campbell and Ben Montench stayed out with him, and they picked up a couple other guys from Gainesville, to fill out the rest of the band. Okay. And then he got signed as Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers. And then in the early 2000s, he decided to re um revive Mud Crutch. And so he got the all the original guys back together oh, and cool. they put out two albums in the 2000s. Okay, interesting. Oh, I definitely have to go back yeah. and listen to that. Okay. And they're actually good songs. Like they they sound like Tom Petty songs, but there's definitely like some different influences there on the songwriting and it's maybe more maybe more psychedelic and a little bit more loose mm-hmm. than Tom Petty, which is like the, you know, two and a half minute hit him with the chorus a couple times right. kind of song. Right, right. Interesting. Did you see the um documentary about Rick Rubin working with Tom Petty pretty much from the beginning to did, did you see that? Yeah, oh yeah. Okay. So for everyone listening We'll link that too, but there's a great documentary that I think will also give you a different perspective on, you know, how unique of an artist that Tom Petty is. And, and, and yeah, certainly the role that Rick Rubin played in it, but even I think Rick Rubin kind of acknowledges, you know, indirectly that he's just a part of the story in terms of what made Tom Petty great. He's super important in in the arc of Tom Petty's story. You know, again, like Mary Jane's Last Dance. Wallflowers, like the whole, right? I think that's the album that that's from. Yeah, there's really three producers that are important. There's Jimmy Iovine, yeah. who produced a bunch of the early stuff. Oh, right, um, yeah, uh-huh. And he also produced a bunch of Stevie Nicks um, solo yes, stuff. Yes, that's right, that's right, so yeah, yeah, yeah. That early 80s is all Jimmy Iovine, and they had a ton of hits. Yeah. And then you he goes the, into the Jeff Lynne Jeff phase, Lynn. yeah. puts out his biggest record ever, right? Um, Full Moon Fever. Traveling Wilburys, and then on to Rick Rubin for a big change of pace. That's a lesson, too, for anyone who is aware of their talent, gets signed, and maybe has somewhat of a say or choice in who gets to produce you, is mm-hmm. look at look at that as a blueprint where these are three producers that have cranked out some really groundbreaking stuff over collectively a 40 50 year period that are all masters of their craft and Uh he he worked with like three of them in a row um i'm sure there's some exceptions here and there you know but but essentially for like you know sort of more than one album he worked with all three of them um and they're all kingmakers you know so right something yeah and tom petty produced if you look at the liner notes mm-hmm. he produced a lot of the songs yeah maybe not the whole record but he produced a lot himself mm-hmm. and is credited with producing some other people as well and so oh okay like you working with other people can inject some new some new life into your work and i think rick rubin has this quote where he's talking about tom petty and he said like tom petty came in the first album and everything he did he was just trying to impress rick rubin mm-hmm. and yeah. he was Every day he's coming in new with a new idea and he's just trying to get some sort of reaction Mm -hmm. and working with new people can give you that motivation to impress somebody. Right. And maybe that's where you're getting that new energy in your work. Right. He's a musical prophet, you know? Um, 
But I'm sorry. Is yeah. it Wildflower? What's the fucking album? I said Wallflowers. That's that's not the name of the album. What is what is Mary Jane's? There's, there's last one dance? called Wildflowers. Um, Mary Jane's Last Dance actually came out on the Tom Petty Greatest Hits album. So they did two oh. brand new songs for the Greatest Hits release. Oh, okay. But it was while they were doing Wildflowers. Oh, that's what it was. Yeah. Yep. Because there's so right. That was the, the thing too. Time. There's like a bunch of material because they did so many covers over the years, kind of like Van Halen did. Which, side note, Van Halen mm-hmm. used to be a cover band, like way before, like not way before, but before they were officially the Van Halen that got signed and we know. And so part of like their whole sound and why they were like kind of like a swing metal band was because they had such like a, like a vast vocabulary and like popular rock music and, and, and other genres too, for that matter, probably disco songs and shit. So anyway, so like Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers, I think also had like a really, really good vocabulary and like a wide variety of oh yeah songs. And and I think in addition to the Wildflowers specific material, there's like the same amount of songs or double that that were recorded during that period of time that are, mm-hmm. I think, covers exclusively. There's some covers. There's some new stuff in there as well. Okay. Um, yeah. So if you look up Wildflowers and all the rest, it's like mm-hmm. a re-release of the original album with yeah. all this. I mean, there's like a whole nother album where this all Okay, right. There. And they talk about that in that documentary, right? Like that's yeah. like, hence what you're saying. Like they were doing the greatest hits thing and it was like, they were doing almost like three different things at once. Right. Or that, that the one kind of thing that was chopped up into three different things basically. Mm-hmm. Right. Okay. Yeah. Yep. And there's also wow. a, um, they just released a live album. Mm-hmm. That's Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers did like, a two week, I think, two week residency mm-hmm. in LA at okay. the Fillmore. Yeah. And they were just the house band at the Fillmore. And there's a lot of really great covers and a couple of like um, deep, deep Tom Petty cuts in yeah. their sets. And okay. it's actually a pretty fun listen. Interesting. Okay. Imagine it's like being there like during that time the and you're just like, oh, really yeah, good. I'm like, it's like uh, the second week of, you know, <laughs> Tom Petty's group being the the house band, you know, at like whatever at what oh at the Fillmore West, you know, it's like <laughs> yeah, shit, yeah, or just the Fillmore. Crazy. I'm sorry, it was just the Fillmore. And then and you the see the show you actually showed up for. Yeah, right. Yeah, it's crazy. Okay, what's your number three after that long departure? <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see. Let me go back to my wrapped. Oh, number three was Mount Joy. Oh, course. okay. All right. Yep. Um, and my number four was the Rolling Stones, surprisingly. Oh, interesting. They got in because of our episode about them. Right. And then number five is the Revivalist. Okay. All right. So you kept it somewhat modern. Yeah. Somewhat modern. A lot of Tom Petty. And the Stones. So you're only like, don't, you know... Don't get all high and mighty on me. You only you, I didn't well, even think the, you, it I didn't was even think you the have modern two. stones. <laughs> but I'm I saying I did, to the brand new release. Right, but like the like technically my two like kid song entries yeah. qualify as modern, you know. So. That's true. So That's true. We're probably that. even unlike <laughs> our last competition. Yeah. <laughs> I think we are probably even. Yeah. Well, this turned into a a, a long rant about Tom Petty which I'm happy with. Yeah, it's it. I mean, we could just simply extrapolate the whole Tom Petty section and then, you know. A quick request. Oh, hey, didn't see you there. You like this video? Leave a comment down below. Give us a thumbs up, subscribe. We'll make more content like this. It helps the algorithm. End of request.